Every year we have a fundraiser to raise money for our field hockey fund and we always sell mom. We do it every year so it's like, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, mom day, like, <laughs> let's go. Outside, put, um, assign everyone a parking spot with all their stuff. We, um, two trucks roll in and family comes and we all just unload them. It takes about an hour and you just see rows and rows of mums. And we just pull all of them out of the trucks and put them on the spots. It's really fun and I think it's like a good team bonding thing too because we're all working together. Or mum day is like Always, it's like stressful because you have to get all your moms in line, but then you have to like unload it off the truck. So I've been in the truck for the past three years and just like unloading them. Yellow, pink, like all, saying all the names. But it's definitely like a bonding experience too because we're communicating. And like I don't think some of the girls notice, but like it's definitely bringing us closer together and having those memories. I just think it's such a great fundraiser. Like other teams sell like cookie dough and coupons. But we sell like actual beautiful flowers and it it's really well. I think we got around, we sold around 1,500. Years ago, there was someone who, she had done it at a, another school that she worked at and had recommended it. Um, so we've sort of, I, I, it's, I think we've done it for like 12 plus years. It's some, something ridiculous, but one, it's nice because no, I don't think many people actually sell mums. It's kind of usually that candy bar or the sports card, so it's nice and it's unique. And they're beautiful. They're from Murray Farms and Pentecook, so they do a wonderful job. But it's just like two hours of pure chaos and craziness. But it's worth it. But it, there's nothing quite like Mom Day. Yeah, it's actually, it's a great point that I had thought of. It's the communication and it's the listening, which we're trying to get a little bit better at too, is not just talking, but hearing what other people are saying to us. But that day, because you're basically, they're just pulling these mums, and I think we sold just under 1,500, so we had 1,500 unloaded in an hour, and it's just people saying, I need a red here, I need a yellow here, and the girls knowing what color they have, because they haven't all bloomed, so they have to make sure that they know that coming off the truck. So it is a really good exercise in paying attention and listening and communicating. I think we're fortunate that we live in New England. There's just some absolutely phenomenal programs, but BC itself is usually always nationally ranked and close to the top 10, if not in the top 10. So years ago, it was just kind of that idea of, I'd like them to see that next level and what the next level looks like at really like an elite level. So every year we pick um, one of the best matchups that's in New England and BC is in a great conference. So we've been able to see like UNC and Virginia and, um, I think Syracuse and Yukon at different times just coming in and so we pick that and then we make a night of it. We get a bus and we take the girls down to Boston and there's sandwiches and food which um, they love too and it's just an exciting opportunity because they can see a game played at such a pure beautiful level and just to really understand what what that game looks like when we start to take it and we've had a lot of girls who have moved on to the college level and I think for our younger girls who might be toying with the idea of playing in college, it's a great opportunity for them to start to see what that might look like, what what commitment might need to be made to start to get to that next level at the college like level. Our senior group always looks forward to those games because we know, like, oh, like, we're going to go see some field hockey. Um, but it's, I think it's really good to get the, like, team really bonded, although we're already really connected. Like, we're, it's a really good group of players. But I think... Um, to be in an atmosphere where like we all love watching it so it's like with a good group of friends just watching some field it's hockey. It's definitely a great experience for us to have and like we're really lucky to have Jess and Fink and Kelly that know and like they want to go to the game too so to see a D1 team playing and see what they work on and the biggest thing that Jess always says is the communication and there wasn't a time where I was watching the game where I didn't hear them talking the entire time and sometimes like on the field like it'll be just dead silent and then we like I always think back and like okay we need to talk we need to be like setting an example for like the younger girls too. It's a good team bonding experience that like still is tying in with field hockey like our entire practice was based off of that game and like how we can play like them or similar to them. At the like elite level um, 
they're doing way more than that we should be doing. Their communication is way better than ours. Like we always talk about that. Like when we watch the older girls play, is that they there's no spot where they aren't talking, and I think that really helps us to look forward. Their passing sequences are way better, and I think watching them just helps us um, improve our skills. Um, I think it's extremely important because at the beginning of the season, it's always, oh yeah, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, and then as it, everyone's busy and things just start to like slow down, having those two days where it was just all of us together and not having to just focus on the field, it just, I felt it brought everyone closer. I think the idea has just been like, we need to focus. We've got six games left. We've got three games, or uh, three weeks left going in before the postseason. And I think it is as important as that beginning part of our season was for us, if not more important, because I think there's a chance that we could really play well for these next six games um, and I think I agree I think Kingswood is a sneaky big one I can't quite make out what they're gonna play like so if anything I think our conversations just keep existing about our mental game how we're gonna play what do we look like um, how are we gonna what's the first 10 minutes gonna look like what's the first half gonna look like what's the whole game gonna look like because um, at this point that's what we can focus on that's what we know and I think we can get information from outside teams, but the most important part would be, does Goffstown show up? And at that first whistle, are we ready to play? And I think if we can do that and set a tone for these next three weeks, that is a very strong tone going into postseason. I mean, it, it was a good game. You, Kingswood played hard. They made things count when they needed to. Um, I think we got caught watching on their second and third goal, which was a little disappointing because we've been playing well, sort of 25 to 25. But um, they have a couple of strong players who had great games against us that day. So they scored on us, and then I thought it was so good. We got, we got right back into it. We scored one, and then we were in the lead, and then they scored another one. And then a couple of them, I just feel like, even coach was saying it like we kind of just watched them play like we weren't like aggressive towards them and that's exactly what we needed to do but um yeah we just needed to be aggressive Every, everyone was kind of disappointed because um we get there everyone's excited to win and then there was just a lot of emotion for especially the kingswood players and then um just we played a very strong first half and i think we just kind of it slipped in the second half the whole game like we had we had it like I felt like we had it for majority of the game and then when they got that goal in the like I think it was the first half yeah we were we were a little disappointed coming out we had a timeout we talked and it still didn't really transfer over so it was, it was definitely disappointing for most of us it was really tough I thought we were able to pull it through all throughout the game like I thought we could do it but Things just happen. It was a really good game. They played a good game. I feel like we put up a good fight. However, there were definitely times where we could have like, cut to the ball faster. We could have had stronger passes. We could have anticipated what they were going to do better. Um, but I think, all in all, it was a good fight. I think we, like, it was really heartbreaking to lose that one. Um, but at the same time, it's like now we know like what else we have to fix for like the tougher teams and what else we're going to have to like keep improving on for when we see them again and when we see those harder teams like Kennett and Derryfield. It was definitely frustrating because we had we had worked hard and we were ready. We had prepared so much and to just not have put enough effort in to just skip out on it a little bit and for them to just get those last two goals it was very frustrating. We're down early and then kind of what that fight looks like for the next 60 minutes and being able to come back and get on the scoreboard. I mean, I really want us to be on the other side of the scoreline against Kingswood, but I do think that's a good mental game for us to have played in to kind of see what it's like when it is close or it's a one goal difference or we find ourselves down, up, and then back down, just what that plays out for or plays out like as a team. Um, it's just like... It was just they got one and then we got two and you're like sweet like we have it we just need one more to like solidify it and then 
and then even me or anyone else, you can kind of just see everyone watching it or even I can see myself watching it and I'm like, ugh. I think it was really significant because um, like usually if another team like scores a goal on us, we kind of like shut down a little bit and it's kind of harder to um, bump back up. But in this case, like we got the our goal like right after they did, we pushed like right back. Um, after talking and then yeah I think it was I think it was really important and I think we had a good game so I'm not taking like that away from the loss but really it was a good game um, we were definitely evenly matched we could have we could have won to have a game that was so back and forth it's it's kind of stressful because you don't know who's gonna come out on top and we definitely want to be the ones who would it was a good learning lesson because we either go from like losing 5-0 to winning 5-0. So it, I think it was a good learning experience to actually have a good fight and play someone who's at the same level as us. And we went off of our mistakes in practice and perfected them. So we should be good for the next fight. I think it kind of motivated us because we were like, okay, now we have to really push it. Because I know Kingswood, like, that was a game that we kind of had to win. So now we're like, okay, we have to win these next couple games. Like, no if ands, or buts. Like, this is what we have to do to, like, have, like, a chance to go to the playoffs. So I think it was more motivating for us. Yeah, I think games like that are really important because it shows, like, especially that we started off down, that we needed, like, we got to, like, fight for it to get it back. And we need to, just because, like, it's not, just because they're not going to blow us out of the water doesn't mean that we shouldn't keep fighting. Like, we need to keep... We gotta like get it back. Like we have to get the goal back. a good going to Friday's game. I mean, I know Merrimack Valley doesn't have necessarily the record, but if you look at their score lines, they're they're playing teams closely and they're not giving up many goals. So going into it, we knew it probably wasn't going to be a blowout or but we thought we could dominate or control a good portion of it. And
creating opportunities in the first half, but I don't know if we were creating dangerous opportunities in the first half. So we just had to adjust with where we were trying to get the ball to, um, the angles that we were using to insert the ball, where we should be positioning ourselves within the circle so that we could make our shot on goal count more. So it was just, again, like that tweaking of little adjustments within the circle so that when we create opportunities, they're a threat and not just sort of a passive ball that can get played out defensively by Merrimack Valley. Um, but it was an easy talk at halftime because it felt like we were doing things well. It just needed to be minor adjustments and maybe minor adjustments with a little bit more intensity at how we were playing it. And I, I think that second half, they just locked it down. So we definitely said like, we can't let up right now. Like definitely they're gonna come out strong and we know that we have to come out even stronger than they are. So we just talked about coming out like we have to get one in the goal. Like it's like no, nothing past, like we have to do it. Like no if, ands, or buts. So that was what we were what I think was it was, it usually like if that ever happens, like we get frustrated. But for this, like in this case, it was way better. We kept our composure and um, I think we just kept fighting for everything. We kept using our skills um, and I think it only got better that second half. We were really determined to dominate the second half. One of the bigger things that we had to focus on was communication and I think towards the end of the game both teams were getting really tired and the communication died out. And I think that's why we weren't able to actually finish our shots because we were in their, offen their defensive end for most of the second half. Just we couldn't finish because we weren't talking. I was glad that they hadn't scored, but I, I did really want to get a goal. We, we had so many opportunities that we just could not put in, and we need to make sure that we just keep finishing those shots. We just need to put one away because once you put one away it helps you get more so um, and we just talked about the things we needed to adjust in our corners and then finally we put one away I felt like by the time we got the goal we had actually had two that I thought we were going to put in and we hadn't. So it was a relief because it felt like we kept having opportunity after opportunity. But if you don't put them in, I mean, a team like Merrimack Valley, I think could have quickly maybe changed that score or done something. So it was uh, Emily Campbell did a beautiful cross across the mouth of the goal. Michaela attempted a shot, but kind of a, almost looks like a fake, but I think she didn't quite make contact with the ball, but Jess was holding her positioning at the post and was able to get that touch and put that the goal That goal in. is essential. Like you really, like obviously that was the winning goal. So it's like you have to count every single shot that you get as if it's gonna be that winning goal. So I remember um, I took it up the field on the sidelines and I kind of drove it in and the goalie hit it back out and Emma sent it back in. and and then I tipped it to Jess and she kind of tipped it in, but it was, it was a lot of just really good connecting passes, like fast, um, swift motions that um, by looking up and looking to see where our players are and anticipating the passes, we were able to get a quick shot off and get a goal. We definitely needed to be more focused because um, we, wouldn't, we didn't want to get another goal. We didn't want to let a goal on us because that would have changed our whole mindset. And I think it was really good that we stayed, um, we stayed focused throughout the whole rest of the game. It definitely it really us. does like ignite a little fire in us. So we're determined to get more goals. But since we weren't talking, it was harder to finish out the play. So we just really just need to continue to work on talking. To hear the sound of the ball hitting the backboard was like it was one of the most beautiful sounds. Because like, yes, like we are in this. We're gonna we're gonna come out on top. Um, for um, offense to finish was. Awesome, I was really happy for them.
save, I think. I think it was only one save, but um, it definitely gets you nervous, especially when you're only up by one. Like, if they score one, like, we're tied. Like, we're going into overtime. And, like, that's the toughest part because we knew that we were better than them, too. So, like, we know that we can get more chances. We just can't finish, and that's, like, the biggest part. Like, you have to finish to, like, win the game. But when it comes down to, like, that two minutes left, like you have to stay like calm and just settle yourself and like take a deep breath and just say you got this. Um, I was extremely frantic because as it's coming back and I'm like, oh, come on, like, it's not like we're up by more than one. Like if they make this, we're going into overtime. And um, it was just kind of like frustrating just because we had had the ball the whole time. It was nerve wracking the entire game when they would get past our 25 because I, don't, I didn't want to go into overtime because overtime is even more stressful and I didn't want to come out with a loss with that game. In the last few minutes where it's, it's the back and forth and you're up one, it's, it's very stressful because you want to make sure you're playing your best and it's hard when you're tired. So to keep going is, that's definitely very hard. Um, it's really like when we're up on our like the offensive end we kind of like stay we're kind of like past the 50 so as soon as like it gets let by us we have to sprint all the way back to our defensive end and it definitely gets really scary because if no one's back there then it's just um, Mackenzie on goal and we're all trying our hardest to get down there so we're just trying to keep it back out but again I thought my defensive unit was very sound so they created a dangerous shot, but my defensively, I thought the girls really were in strong positions and carried the ball out and then were making strong um, transitions up the field from our defensive end. So it never felt like we were in danger for more than a few, few seconds. <laughs> we played well but I really loved how we played second half because it felt like we had settled in and were able to really keep the play above our 25 and create more chances offensively in the circle that were dangerous as opposed to just kind of getting the ball in the circle um, but I, I, I like how we as a team sort of responded coming off of Wednesday's loss to Kingswood. We were really excited um, because yeah after coming out of Kingswood uh, we knew what we needed to work on, and we definitely, it definitely showed in the game against Merrimack Valley. Um, I mean, it was kind of like I wish we had gotten more goals, but the one to zero definitely showed us that um, we could be one off and still like have the intensity and keep pushing forward.